Hey guys, uh, welcome to uh, lesson number five of the muscular system. So let's take a look at our uh, assignment for today. Uh, so watch the video, what you are doing. So good. Today we're going to be taking a look at the muscles of the legs. This shouldn't take too long um, since it's uh, only a, a little bit uh, of, of muscles. It shouldn't be all that much. We do have about 20 or 23, if I remember correctly, uh, done so far with the head and neck, the uh, the arm and torso. Now we're doing the legs. So again, we're going to create another chart. That chart's going to be the same as the other charts that you have made with four columns across the top, the name of the muscle, the origin, the insertion, and the action of that muscle. Okay. And just to let you know that on April 6th, which is Monday, which is the next time we meet, the assignment will be uh, to take your test on Kia. All right. That test will only be available during the uh, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, window. And please, please, please make sure that you begin that exam um, prior to 11 o'clock. OK, I would actually say you should start that exam prior to 10 o'clock at night if you're going to wait that long. Um, because I don't know, I've never done this with Kia before, so I'm not sure if uh, it shuts you out at 11 o'clock. Even if you started it at 1030, you have an hour to take the test. Um, I think it's an hour, if I remember correctly, to take the test. Um, so, yeah, please give yourself ample time to do that. And don't forget to take it if you forget to take it or if it doesn't get um, registered then you will uh, receive a zero for it. So let's not have that happen, okay? So let's uh, get into it real quick. So muscles of the leg. First one, gluteus maximus. That's the one we all know and love as the, the butt cheek, right? So this is a right gluteus maximus. And we said before, if it's called anything, if there's any like adjective afterwards, okay, um, gluteus maximus, that usually means there's a minimus or an opposite to what that muscle is. And there is, if we take away the gluteus maximus, um, there is a smaller muscle that is very, very similar uh, in shape and size, um, not size, shape and uh, action. They in, are, uh, they originate and insert almost in the same areas. Um, and they're gonna do the same uh, overall action. And the action of this muscle is actually to bring your leg backwards, right? So um, people who ice skate, okay, hockey players, uh, tend to have very uh, defined gluteus maximus muscles um, because they have to push backwards with their feet all the time in order to project themselves forward. Uh, so this muscle is going to be very, very important in bringing your foot backwards and also inwards a little bit, medial to the body a little bit. Okay, so it extends and rotates the thigh laterally. Okay, so if we continue moving down. Okay, let's move to the front. Um, with the quadriceps, okay? So there are, the quadriceps actually have uh, four muscles in the muscle group. That's why it's called a quadriceps, right? We, we heard quads, right? You probably heard that um, term before. So it's quadricep, quadricep is the actual name. So it's four heads, just like bicep was two heads, tricep, three heads, quad is four heads, right? Or four muscles. And one of those muscles is called the rectus femoris. Okay, rectus usually means down the center, right? We had rectus abdominis, uh, and we're going to look at rectus femoris. And that's this muscle right here. It's the big, thick muscle that is going to run down the center of your thigh. If you, if you put your leg straight out, if you extend your leg straight out, this, uh, this muscle forms a big bump, um, maybe a couple of inches above your knee, okay? Uh, and it's very, very well defined in people. Uh, and that's going to be, so it originates over here and inserts onto like the patella area. It's going to, um, shorten or contract towards the origin. So when this contracts and shortens towards the origin, it's going to lift, uh, or extend or straighten the leg, right? So if I have a person here and their leg is bent and this is the knee, okay. Uh, if that quadricep shortens towards the origin this leg is gonna go up and straighten out, okay? It's going to uh, increase the angle, right? So the angle here is 90 degrees. If we extend our leg, it makes this angle 
180 degrees. So it makes our angle bigger, right? So that is the rectus femoris. That's only one of the muscles in your quads. Okay, we're not going to, we might not talk about all of them. Okay. Uh, another muscle in, now this is, remember, this is the anterior portion, right? This is anterior. The gluteus maximus was posterior, right? That's on the back of you. Your uh, quadriceps are on the front of you. Okay, so we're staying on the anterior um, view here. Okay, and this muscle is called the gracilis muscle. This is the technical term for your groin. Okay, and let me move to red here. Okay, and the gracilis is this muscle right here that runs along the inner part of your thigh. Okay, right there. Okay, it's a terrible color that I chose, but that's okay. Okay, right over here, this muscle right here. And that is called your groin, and it's going to help. Um, it, it originates over here. It inserts down here on this on the medial side of your knee and what it's going to do is when it shortens it shortens towards the origin like always it always shortens towards the origin and that's going to help actually pull your leg back inwards and if we remember that name of that particular uh, motion or that movement okay when we're adding our muscle our our limb back to us that is called adduction right a d d duction okay we're adding it back to us Okay, muscles over here on the outside, the lateral side of our thigh, are going to go outwards and abduct. Okay, but our gracilis is going to adduct. Okay, our groin is going to adduct. Okay. Okay, if we um, stay on the anterior portion of the thigh, we have the sartorius. Okay, the sartorius muscle is this long, slender muscle that originates over here on your iliac crest and is going to insert on the medial side of your uh, tibia, okay? And this muscle is always going to, again, going to shorten, okay, um, towards the origin, and it's going to actually rotate. Uh, if you put your foot out straight and you rotate your toes so that your toes point away from you, that's what this is going to help you do, okay? This is going to help you rotate your leg laterally or rotates the thigh this entire portion of your leg is going to rotate this way okay and when your thigh rotates that way everything else is going to follow because it's all attached right so you can't rotate your thigh without rotating your shin and your foot as well because they're all attached but all of this is going to rotate outwards or laterally and that's called the sartorius okay and i can show you that word up here again there it is sartorius okay Okay, now we're going to switch to the uh, posterior view once again. Okay, and this is called the biceps femoris. Bicep, okay, same word as the bicep on the arm. Okay, but we're going to be talking about the leg now. So we're, we're going to put this term here, femoris, right? The, in the arm, it was biceps bronchi. Okay, and bronchi refers to the, or the brachy rather, refers to the brachial artery that's in your arm. That's the brachial region, and that's why it's called biceps brachii, okay, because it's the brachial region. Here is the femoral region or the femoris region, which refers to your femur, right? So here's your hip. Your The head of your femur would be here somewhere. The trochanters of your femur would be over here, and then the shaft of the femur would be over here, and the condyles of your femur would be over there somewhere. Okay, so it's the biceps, two heads, uh, two-headed muscle, uh, that go along the femur, right? So here is our biceps femoris right here. Okay, right there. That's our biceps femoris, okay? And that is going to be part of your um, hamstring, okay? It's going to be one of the parts of your hamstring. So if we have the leg, uh, if we let's, let's talk about uh, having a person here. So here's a person, here's their shoulder, and here's their arm straight out. Um, and here's their elbow, and here's their hand, right? The bicep, which is here, when it flexes, it brings this arm um, towards the chest of the individual, towards the head of the individual, uh, making this angle shorter, right? So the arm would be this way. Instead of it being 180 degrees, it would be 90 degrees. Same thing with the leg. So if we draw that same person, here's their back. Okay, draw their back. Okay, here's their hip. Here's their leg. Here's their knee, here's their shin, here's their foot, right? Their arm would be over here somewhere, right? Um, the biceps femoris is going to flex the same way the arm flexes. So instead of the arm, the arm's going to flex in front of you, 
your leg, if we flexed it and put the foot here, okay, the leg flexes behind you, but it does the same motion. So the bicep on the arm and the bicep on the leg, they do the same exact um, function. They both flex a muscle, right, because they're shortening the angle, right? This angle is 180. This angle is 90. This angle was 180. If the arm was straight out, and this angle is 90. So they do the same thing, but in opposite directions because the joints are in opposite ways, right? The hinge of your arm bends forward in front of you. The hinge of your leg bends backwards, okay? But same basic function. Okay. The gastrocnemus, okay? The gastrocnemus is the scientific term for your calf muscle, okay? And that uh, calf muscle is that big, big muscle on the back of your um, lower leg. And it originates over here. It actually inserts on your heel. Okay. And it inserts on the calcaneal bone, cal or calcaneal bone of the heel. And it's going to shrink or sh contract in the direction of the origin. And when it pulls on the heel, it's going to make your toes point down. Okay. So when you want to stand on your tippy toes or when you want to jump, okay, you jump by, um, pointing your feet down towards the ground and lifting up your heel, right? If you were to jump, uh, to get a rebound or to do a layup in a basketball game or to do a high jump, okay, or any type of jump or any type of walking, you're actually pressing your toes down against the floor and bringing your heel up, which propels you forward, right? And that's what your gastrocnemus does or nemius does, okay? It's a big muscle there, and it, it, it's attached. One thing that you should know is that it, it's attached to your heel with this tendon here, which is a very famous tendon. That's called the Achilles tendon. Okay, I'm not sure if I know how to spell Achilles. Uh, Achilles, maybe? Whatever. That's the Achilles tendon, okay? And if you slice the Achilles tendon, okay, you can no longer control your foot going down, right? You can still control your foot going up. You can still, you can still do um, dorsiflexion, right? Because the tibialis anterior over here, okay, is going to help pull the top of your foot upwards. Okay, but you cannot walk, essentially. You can't push your foot down, okay? The only way you propel yourself forward is by pushing your toes down into the ground, which propels you forward, right? So if you uh, tear your Achilles or if your Achilles gets cut, uh, you cannot, you can no longer do that. So walking is impossible if you harm your Achilles tendon, okay? And I'm pretty sure this is the last one that we're going to do, and it, I, I just mentioned it in the other um, previous slide was the tibialis anterior, tibialis anterior. So that means it's on the tibia, right? It's on the tibia. The tibia bone is your shin bone, right? And it's on the anterior side of your tibia. So it's in the front, right? Um, if it's, if there's an anterior, that must mean there's a posterior. So there must be a tibialis posterior as well, right? But we're not looking at that because it's probably very deep compared to this one, which is more superficial. Okay. And that's this muscle right here. And that's going to originate over here. It's going to insert over your toes, okay, or over the, the tarsal bones, okay. And it's, like I said before, it's going to contract towards the origin. It's going to help you to dorsiflect, dorsiflex, okay. And that's going to bring your toes upwards, okay. It's going to make your heel go into the ground. It's going to make your toes go up, okay. And that is going to... Uh, do it for the muscles of the human body. So today, just to um, count how many we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think that gives us an even number of 30, if I remember correctly, or very close to it, right? So we had, uh, I want to say we had 16 uh, or 20. We had 20 for the head and neck. We had, um, no, did we have 20 for the head and neck? I think so. No, we, we might have had eight. Yeah, we had eight for the head and neck. Then we had another 14, uh, I think, or 16 for the arm uh, and torso. And then just another seven. I think that gives us 30, if I remember correctly. If I'm wrong, it's okay. Um, you guys should have all of them. I have them written down somewhere over here. I just got to find the paper. Um, but you guys should have them all written down somewhere. All right, so go back to this. Make sure you upload that, that chart by the end of the night. And don't, do not forget, your test for the muscle system is 
on Monday, April 6th, and it's open at 9 a.m. It's on Kia. Okay, so here are the directions for that, just in case. Log on to Kia, and you're going to take the test that is titled Muscular System Written Test. Okay, normally I would have given you guys a practical exam as well, but I'm not going to do that here. Okay, um, this is what I want you to do. So you have an hour to complete it. Please make sure that you have time to take the test and make sure that your device is charged. If, you're, if your computer loses power and shuts off halfway through the test, I will not be able to give you access to that test again um, because I'm not going to be sitting around waiting for you for 13, 14 hours for you to take that test by my computer. It's just not going to happen. Okay. Um, so make sure that all the conditions that you need to take this test are the proper conditions with your electronics, with your household. Um, if you think you're going to be interrupted or anything like that, don't take it at that point. Take it at a time where you're not going to be uh, disturbed. Uh, you are not to use any outside sources. You are not to use the internet. You are not to use your uh, notes. Um, we are relying on an honor system and an honor code. Um, please do not share or um, talk to anybody else about the test. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. Um, we're going to try our best to, we, we trust you guys and we're going to hope that you guys do the right thing. Okay. After you are done with the test, <clears throat> and again, that test must be done prior to 11 o'clock, please fill out a document. Just open up a blank document and on that document says, I, Mr. I, uh, I completed the exam. Thank you. And then put your name at the end. I just want to know that everyone completed the exam. Okay, so just on this assignment, okay, on this assignment, just add a document that says, hey, Mr. I, what's up? I completed the test. Thanks. Have a good weekend or whatever. Okay, because after this um, is Easter break. I'm pretty sure the next, uh, I don't, we don't have class again until um, 420, April 20th. All right. So if you have any questions prior to the test, um, please email me. Do not ask questions on the uh, assignments. Because I have to, I have to return those responses on the computer. If you just email me and I'm on my phone, I can just answer you from the phone. All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much, and have a good night.